Okay, a little tritium here. Um, class changes. So let's change the team to blue, and we'll just change the class to play. And then, of course, we're going to eject out, and we can see what our mesh looks like. And this mesh is going to change as it's not actually assigned to the class. So let's go ahead and stop this. I'm going to show how it was done. We'll pull this in. So for anyone who's wondering, uh, this is, we're just going to show you a, a typical class. This is a, the medium class, and you'll see by default it's using the SK mannequin. Um, so all of the, the classes all have, this is the default, and then when they're spawned in, this is swapped out for a uh, predetermined mesh for that class. Uh, and I want to show real quick uh, how, where that's done. Uh, we actually do it after we spawn in a class, we then assign a mesh. Uh, so I'm going to turn around and go into the uh, mesh assignment here. So assign class, mesh. Um, and we're going to turn mesh number actually was uh, determined by the uh, enum of what class. So the, the first class will be 0, and 1, 2, 3, 4. <clears throat> and then this gets fed into our array that's already been made. So for instance, I'll click on red team. You can see here we have our uh, mesh arrays for red team, and this would be for 0, 1, 2, 3. And uh, right, I think that's a Sol, I think this one's the, the Scout. So we can change this whenever we want. What's nice is that we actually feed in the team. And based on the team, we're going to either assign, uh, we can assign a different array, assign blue team. And of course, right now they're all the same, but we could change these. So if you want to have it where there's creatures for one team and uh, soldier uniforms for the other, you could. And yet, um, all the class uh, uh, values are going to be maintained. Uh, so a, you know, a scout team A could be human, and a scout team B could be a, you know, a, an insect or something. But otherwise, it would have the same weapons and, and all that kind of thing. And of course, here, uh, this is the, the logic for just assigning. We, we do a, a valid check to make certain that the mesh was valid. If not, we don't bother. Um, and let's go back to, so this was uh, our base character uh, child. Let's go to we actually had to change some logic here. Uh, FPS uh, game mode and FPS game child. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, the, the, uh, um, I actually put in the base character child. I put this function in the assign class mesh. That way anyone can call this. Um, so this this gets called by, you know, this can be called at any time actually. So actually as we play the game, we could turn around and call this and then change the mesh, because all we're doing is we're feeding in these two values, are right now a third-person mesh and a first-person mesh. Um, I'm going to be changing this to have more items, but like I said, on the fly, we can change this. I'm just doing it when the, uh, game, when the player is being spawned. One of the differences, also, we're using the FPS template. This is how the original spawn character pawn exists in the FPS uh, game manager. Uh, and these are all, you know, setting up different uh, values based on what we're feeding in. And then based on the team, we then go to different branches, and we can spawn all our, our different uh, classes. And over here you'll see spawn BP assault class B, and up here was assault class A. But now, the downside with this is that we have to have a separate blueprint for each class, for each team. Um, I think it's kind of redundant and silly. So we reduce this to this. So we're going to override and go to spawn character pawn. Here we go. So this is what we have right now. Again, we, we start out, we're initializing all these values. If we want, we could trigger the parent uh, function if we want, but we're not going to. We're not going to be touching it. Uh, this logic here is a little bit different. This is recalculating the spawn points based on spawning volumes. So we don't have to actually put in spawn points. If, however, there is no spawning volume found for the team, 
um, it does default to um, whatever the transform was set prior, it will then use that. Uh, but for now, if we do find a spawning value, we will override the transform value. And then we spawn one of, right now, one of four different classes. And so medium, uh, BP medium class, we use this for red team or blue team. And after, and of course, the spawning volume, uh, if this was red team, it will spawn in the red team's BP spawning volume. And if this will be blue. Uh, and then right after it gets spawned, we then assign, we're, we're going to go into this macro. Uh, and it's, you know, it's feeding in, you'll see here, a C player class, and then we turn around and we convert it to an integer so that we can use it for the array. Uh, I suppose I could, uh, I, I like this better. So we go into there, and here's the map, and here, this is what you saw before. Uh, it just goes through, and if it's um, red team, which is zero, uh, it goes to we'll use the mesh arrays for red and first person shooter, or in the first person mesh array. And if it's blue team, it uses this. Uh, and we set the team, and then we uh, possess it. Yeah, that's it. So uh, that's how we were able to simplify the uh, uh, FPS uh, template. And by the way, the volumes you were wondering about, here's one right here. We have a, um, this is the spawning volume for blue team deathmatch. Um, so it will it just finds a point random. So if we had 100 guys, it would try to spawn 100 guys in there. We can increase the size of this. And over here is the uh, red team, its counterpart. So uh, that's where red team would spawn. Uh, and I'm also using the spawning volumes for the monsters. So we have... Uh, monsters that are supposed to go after uh, the red red reactor. Uh, actually, you see a monster red team deathmatch. Um, and then of course for the blue we have blue here. Here we go. That's that's what we got so far. And we're gonna be moving on now, I think, to changing the arms. If you, you notice the arms were red. We now have to actually make the custom arms match the uh, classes. Thank you very much.